I often get questions about specific types of crow and raven vocalizations. And one of the most common ones that frequently comes up is basically, you know, someone says, hey, I was out in the woods and I heard this crazy sound and it sounded kind of like a human being screaming off in the distance. Very often, if this story is coming to me during, you know, late spring or early summer, this is actually juvenile ravens doing a very specific type of behavior. And it's a great piece of knowledge to have about crow and raven language, you know, especially if you're interested in interpreting what crows and ravens are actually saying and the meaning of their communication. So, you know, there was a time when I was living out on the West Coast at Wilderness Awareness School when I had a chance to get an up close and personal view of what is actually going on when the ravens make that crazy screaming sound. And there's a really nice population of ravens on the land there and they like to hang out in the this big Douglas fir monoculture forest right next to the school. It's this really weird forest that was logged a few years back and then it was replanted with nothing but Douglas fir trees, you know, as far as the eyes can see. And they're all, you know, the exact same age and, and they all have incredible amounts of moss hanging from the branches. So we would always call it the enchanted forest. And, you know, it's, it's really not what I would call a particularly healthy or diverse forest, but it does have ravens in it. And in springtime, you can hear the juveniles calling out there. So. Um, with this video, I'll make sure to include some links to where you can actually hear audio examples of the vocalizations I'm talking about. It really does sound kind of like a human being is basically just screaming their head off every few seconds. And this goes on all day long at certain times of year. So I went out there one day and I was actually just walking through. I wasn't even looking for where the ravens were hanging out, but I happened to be walking really close to where they had their home base that day. And I got to observe what they do when they make that crazy screaming sound. And so there was like three of them and they were spread out amongst two or three trees in the middle of the forest. They were almost up in the canopy, but definitely below the top. So they had lots of cover, um, you know, maybe three quarters of the way up a big Douglas fir tree and they were just sitting there screaming over and over again. And so I just started watching and observing and it was a great opportunity to learn about their behavior. And I started to notice that, you know, every few minutes or so, the parent ravens would come back to the tree and they were bringing food. And as soon as the young ones would see the parents, they would start screaming and their vocalizations would go a little bit insane for a short period of time. They'd fly over to where the parents were bringing the food and scream a little bit and then they'd eat the food and, and their parents would leave again so they'd kind of calm down a little bit. You could hear um, they were going back and forth with this intermittent screaming and this is very often what people are actually hearing when they notice these kinds of, you know, human-like screaming sounds from out in the middle of a forest all day long. It's incredibly common. And I figured out that just by listening for the rhythm of their screaming and noticing those moments when it gets more intense and, and moments when it kind of calms down a little bit, you can actually tell from a very long distance the exact moment when the parents come back with food and as they go off again to gather more. Um, you can hear all these little feeding dynamics just by listening to the juvenile raven call. So this is a really great pattern to tune your ears with anytime you want to get a deeper window into the language of ravens and especially if you want to use raven sounds in order to predict other things happening at a distance in the forest. You know, ravens do pay attention to various types of predators and they'll let you know by giving alarm calls when there are things like hawks or sometimes owls or even things like wolves will have an effect on the behavior of ravens and crows and on a broad level, you know, all the songbirds in the forest. So I really love it when I see people starting to get tuned in with how birds communicate different types of messages and how those messages can really teach us amazing things about the forest, about the animals that live in the forest. And it's one of the most powerful ways to train your awareness 
and actually open up your radar dish by listening carefully to the language of nature. So if you want to learn more about raven language and the language of crows, you know, because they are very similar, check out my free book, What's That Crow Saying? I have lots of videos and articles about bird language that I think you'll really enjoy. And I would love to share some of the fascinating things that I've learned about bird language and nature awareness through the years because it's a really cool skill and I think you'll probably fall in love with it too. So check out the links that go with this video and I'll talk to you next time.